Thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, my name is Lauren. I am a PhD candidate in anthropology. I have been TAing and, as of last summer, teaching intro to cultural anthropology off and on for the last four years. And a key component of this class has always been this question of, well, what's the course project? How do we actually get students to not only think about anthropology as a research based discipline, but also as something that they can take on beyond the context of the course. And to do this, I use ethnography, uh, a form of research in anthropology, uh, predominantly in cultural anthropology, that allows students to think through their projects in a form of project-based learning. So that's not it, okay. Um, anyway, the definition of ethnography depends on who you talk to. You get four anthropologists in a room, you'll get six definitions of it. Um, I use Clifford Geertz's as a way to approach the project itself because when Geertz looks at ethnography, this practice of not only writing about culture, but practicing it from an anthropological perspective, it gets students to think, oh, I'm not just learning about a group of people and writing about it. I'm actually going to learn from them and with them. And that with part is really important when we're thinking about project-based learning because it can't just be learning and writing a paper. You actually have to use these threshold concepts and going beyond just the writing about culture to writing with culture. So how did I actually get to doing this? And I'm gonna try and make it through this as fast as possible. I apologize, I love memes. They come up all the time. Um, but this question about what exactly is ethnography, is it just go hang out with a group of people for a couple hours and then go write about it? I would say that that is part of it. Hanging out is definitely a component to participant observation, but it's that rigorous critical lens that you bring to the table that makes ethnography useful, both as a researcher as well as as a teacher. So when I think about it as you know, an anthropologist teaching new anthropologists, I always call my students new anthropologists because that's what they're doing. Um, I think about what this might look like. And for me, I chose to focus the ethnography on a particular site. So asking students not just to go look for a group or go look at a topic, but to select a site that is of use to them, something that they are invested and interested in. I've had students write groups about clubs, about religious groups, um, but also about things like a coffee shop or a classroom. And in doing so, it allows them to develop their own research questions, something that isn't just, oh, I like to think about climate change and this is how these people are doing it, but asking how these people are doing it and what might be connected to broader course themes, providing what we might call a holistic approach, right? Looking at it from multiple different points of view. And as such, this allows them to get actual hands-on experience. Something that I found when I was an undergrad is we didn't get a lot of actual experience doing research. Got really good at writing papers, but it doesn't actually mean that I knew what ethnography looked like beyond just reading it in a book. So by encouraging students to go out and do it themselves, which is obviously a key component of project-based learning, they get a chance to, one, learn what ethnography actually looks and feels like, but two, rethink what Isla Vista and UCSB is as a whole, like thinking through this normal everyday life from a very particular perspective. So to do this, I like to think about how this might look in practice, right? You can't just think about, again, memes, can't get over them. The far side is great if you're ever interested in anthropological comics. Um, but some things that we can do in project-based learning is actually getting people to experience it. Now, I've done this through mental mapping, which is a way of asking students to track what their spaces look like. Uh, I will be doing it uh, as a TA. I've been, uh, by looking at groups, asking students to think about groups. What I'd like to do in this class, this particular lecture hall, which I've never been in before today, is to think about how we might use this site as an ethnography. Now, there's a bunch of different things that you can think about in anthropology, whether it's power, or culture, obviously, gender, sexuality, all this stuff that makes people invested in it. But by looking at a particular room like this one, we might be able to start thinking about it this way. So just look around the room for a second. Take a look around. Again, I'm gonna do this as fast as possible. I usually spend about 20, 30 minutes in section doing this. Um, what are some things that you immediately notice? Like things that you take away, just a glance around the room. There's historical photos on the wall. So let's just dive into that because we don't have time to get a whole bunch of examples. Um, so by positioning a bunch of photos on a wall, how do we think about how somebody might choose to live in this space? Because like, did anybody else notice the photos on the wall before you looked around? Got a couple nods, about half and half. 
And those are positioned for a very particular purpose, right? And how might you figure out what that purpose would be? Like, what, what could you do as new anthropologists in this room? Ask what? Ask someone. Ask someone. Who would you ask, though? That becomes the next question. Staff. Ask staff, right. And in order to do this as a new anthropologist, so as a student, you would have to go find a staff member which means taking that first step in ethnography. You're not just thinking about your site, you're thinking about the people in it. You're thinking about who's creating these. So maybe if there's a date on the photos, right? Maybe you can track down the original photographer or the person who printed the photographs. But you'd have to figure out the different steps to doing that. And then you have to think about why am I even looking at photos in the first place, right? Because this isn't just participating, you're also doing this in a critical, uh, critical discourse. You're inserting yourself into ethnographic practices. So just by looking around the room, it's really easy to start thinking this way. And then by continually incorporating this into the course, whether through getting them to do practices in lecture, having various sorts of homework scattered throughout uh, the lecture or the class, and then finally getting them to produce an ethnography of their own that incorporates these observations and questions with these analytical lenses. So I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. Um, last couple of slides here are just strengths, difficulties that you might have when approaching something like this as project-based learning, and then some uh, suggestions that I've gotten from doing this for a while. Uh, so obvious strengths, this, you'll see this in almost any sort of project-based learning, but particularly because you're working with people, um, it is something that can be student-directed. It allows for creativity and students to think about, oh, I'm not just interested in anthropology because it says culture. Culture is such a broad term, it's like ethnography. So you have to ask them what specifically might they be interested in. It allows students who maybe are more on the STEM side to think, okay, well, what does math look like from a cultural perspective? Or maybe what's my past, my family look like? How might we think through this in these different ways? Also allows and encourages deep knowledge of a very particular site. And any introductory course, there's a lot to cover. And you'll never be able to look at every single thing as in-depth as you would like. But this allows students to choose something that they're interested in and dive in deeply. Like that analogy that dissertations are always that tiny little bump in the circle of knowledge. Uh, this allows the students to start making those little bumps of their own. And it also allows for, again, applied hands-on practice. It allows them to think beyond just what the context of the course might be, but think about what holism might be when you think outside the classroom. Again, maybe it's math, but maybe you go on and do some volunteering based on the site that you're working at. Thinking through that allows, again, uh, creative expression and the rethinking of the normal or the everyday. Anthropology at its heart is all about people. And we think of ourselves as normal. So by rethinking what normal looks like by going out and working with people, it creates and maintains knowledge that you may not otherwise have had, like pictures on a wall. Of course, this also comes with some caveats. There is always a difficulty in implementing project-based learning, no matter how you are looking at it. Uh, so in particular, given that I'm working with an introductory class, there are a lot of moving parts and time management is always key. You get six weeks during the summer to teach not only all the introduction to cultural anthropology, but introduce them to ethnography and get them to complete the course, get them to complete the project. So how do you actually manage all of these different parts? And it's not just on you, it's on them. Because ethnography involves actual people, you have to they have to figure out when in the course will they have time to go out and do it. So just that question of how much time am I spending on this in lecture, out of lecture, how do I juggle it with jobs and other classes, and how do I do this in a way that encourages students to keep thinking about it even after you're done? Because if they're spending all quarter doing this one project and then they hate it, you know, there's not as much you can get out of it, I think. So of course that's part of uh, using human subjects and selecting your site or your group or however you're using an ethnographic or human subjects research project. Uh, and finally, this balance of creativity and the introduction of, student, of rigorous analytical knowledge, right? Just because you understand what sex is on a piece of paper doesn't mean that you might know how to apply it to a group of people. So this constant, and, and these are all things that come up in project-based learning, but they're very particular in the context of an ethnographic project. So I'd like to conclude with some suggestions for using research, particularly human-based research, in project-based learning. Uh, 
And these are things, again, come up with over several years of doing these projects and hopefully continuing to do them in the future. Uh, the, obviously, clarity of schedule and objectives, making sure students know in advance what's coming and incorporating that into your lectures, whether it's through section or it's through uh, what you're talking about. So what, like what I was doing earlier, asking people to participate. So that way they're feeling like, oh, maybe I'm the anthropologist at this point, um, but they can go out and do this as well. Uh, then, of course, providing examples, uh, breaking down the project into manageable parts, which is part of this clarity of knowledge. So maybe one week the proposal is due, the next week they'll do methods themselves in class, so that way they can go out and do them later, and so on and so forth. Um, as it is a part of project-based learning, you have to take the process into the project. In identifying these different segments, you can't just say, oh, it's here's the calendar, go do it. You have to look at how they're advancing through the course and see what happens at the end. And this is why I really like ethnography, because it gets students to think outside of the classroom and actually go outside the classroom, and in doing so, rethinking what the normal and everyday might look like from a holistic perspective. So, thank you. Happy, Happy to take a question, if anyone has any questions. I would like to know, oh, yeah. please. Some of them do. Uh, I've had a couple of students um, who have actually come back and done uh, work with cultural anthropologists on campus. Uh, some of the professors have labs for upper div students to go back and do research, and not just for anthropologists. Um, and other students have set, come to me afterwards and just appreciate and talked about how they never really thought about this community that they lived in that they're now doing work with. And I'd, like most people aren't going to go on to do an anthropology degree afterwards, but at the very least, they get that holistic perspective. And they really seem to, I can't say all of them do, um, but most of the ones that I talk to do seem to really appreciate that. And the chance to go out and do something rather than just sit in a classroom.